We long for the presence of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Come, there of the Longing for shelter, many are homeless. Longing for warmth, many are cold. Make us your building, sheltering others, walls made of living stone. <coughs> Love coming to earth to live among us, full of grace and truth. Do not be afraid. See, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. Christ shall shine in our hearts today. And now, and over to Richard, who's going to birth leading this morning. Um, going to have our readings now. Um, going to have three passages from the Gospel of Matthew. Um, from the very beginning of the Gospel of Matthew, we're telling you a nativity story, but with a, a slightly different slant on uh, to usual. Usual, because I said just now we're going to be looking at Joseph's role in a nativity story, um, and the passages I'm going to read are from the CEV translation, contemporary English version, just because they're a little bit, I don't know, a little bit less formal. Um, the starting at Matthew. Matthew 1, uh, verse 18. This is how Jesus Christ was born. A young woman named Mary was engaged to Joseph from King David's family. But before they were married, she learned that she was going to have a baby uh, by God's Holy Spirit. Joseph was a good man and did not want to embarrass Mary in front of everyone, so he decided to quietly call off the wedding. While Joseph was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord came to him in a dream. And the angel said, Joseph, the baby that Mary will have is from the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and marry her. Then after her baby is born, name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So the Lord's promise came true, just as a prophet had said. A virgin will have a baby boy, and he will be called Emmanuel, which means... God is with us. After Joseph woke up, he and Mary were soon married, just as the Lord's angel had told him to do. They did not sleep together uh, before her baby was born. Then Joseph named him Jesus. And then from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 and 2 to 7, uh, and 2 to 7, 2, 7 to 15. Uh, so, so chapter 2, verse 1. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was king. During this time, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is a child born to the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was worried. And so was everyone else in Jerusalem. Herod brought together the chief priests and the teachers of the law of Moses and asked them, Where will this Messiah be born. He told, they told him, he'll be born in Bethlehem, just as a prophet wrote. Herod secretly called in the wise men and asked them where they had first seen the star. He told them, uh, sorry, when they had first seen the star, he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. I want to go and worship him as well. The wise men listened to what uh, the king said and then left. And the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were thrilled and excited to see the star. When the men went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they, went, they knelt down and worshipped him. They took up their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and gave them to him. But later they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and they went back home by another road. After the, three, after the wise men had gone, 
an angel from the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, hurry, and take the child and his mother to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is looking for the child and wants to kill him. That night Joseph got up and took his wife and the child to Egypt, where they stayed until Herod died. So the Lord's promise came true, just as the prophet had said, I called my son out of Egypt. And then from verse 19, after King Herod died, an angel from the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph while he was still in Egypt. The angel said, get up and take the child and his mother back to Israel. The people who wanted to kill him are now dead. Joseph got up and left them um, and left with them for Israel. But when he heard that Herod's son, uh, Archelaus, was now ruler of Judea, he was afraid to go there. Then in a dream he was told to go to Galilee. And they went to live there in the town of Nazareth. So the Lord's promise came true, just as the prophet had said, he will be called a Nazarene. In the traditional nativity story, um, Joseph often seemed to get overlooked. Uh, and only ever seemed to play a small part in me, think all the nativity scenes at schools around the country. Um, you know, Joseph is sort of standing there and he's sort of dressing down or whatever, sort of standing a bit afar with all the sort of Mary uh, and the little plastic <laughs> Jesus. Um, and, the, and even the, you know, the king's men come trotting in with their crowns and the, the shepherds are there, with their sort of little big toy lambs and stuff. And they get a bigger part to play, I think, than Joseph. Joseph's just sort of standing there, just watching all this unfold. It's like as if he's there watching from the sideline. <clears throat> but actually, as we just heard from those Bible passages, Joseph played a really important role, didn't he? And in fact, if he hadn't done what he did, then arguably, we wouldn't be here celebrating Christmas at all, because Jesus wouldn't have survived his early years. I say arguably, because I'm sure that God wouldn't have let anything mess up his plans for Jesus. But nonetheless, Joseph did play a vital role. So let's look at what he did. Well, first, he went ahead and married Mary, uh, when it would have been very normal at that time for a man to abandon his fiancée uh, if she became pregnant uh, with someone else's child. I suspect his mates laughed at him, made fun of him. You know, down at the, down at the inn, you know, had, had a few drinks, you know, oh, Joseph, you mad? She's pregnant. It's not yours. What are you doing? What are you marrying her for? You mad? But, despite this, he went ahead and married her, and then helped her very much look after her son. Second, he saved the life of Jesus by taking him to safety in Egypt. Um, and that's a big thing in those days, you know, travelling to Egypt like that. Um, couldn't just sort of jump in a car and get on the motorway, um, because they didn't have cars, um, or motorways for that matter. And good old Google Earth and looked it up, and... It's nearly a hundred miles from Bethlehem to the border of Egypt. Um, and yeah, over pretty rough terrain. Um, and they were then probably, you couldn't just get just across the border, they would then have to go on probably quite a way until they could find somewhere where they could live for quite a while. Um, and that was on a donkey. Um, I mean, Mary and Jesus with a donkey, Joseph would have been walk walking alongside. So, I mean, 100, 200 miles. Riding on a donkey or walking next to a donkey. That was quite an undertaking. It's not something you do lightly, you know, on a bit of a whim. And then Joseph took Mary and Jesus back to Israel once it was safe, and then on to Nazareth when things started getting a bit dodgy uh, again around Jerusalem. So the question is, how did Joseph know what to do each time? How did he know what to do? It's because God spoke to Joseph in dreams. But it wasn't as simple as that. Joseph had to do his bit as well. Joseph needed to be open to God. Joseph needed to trust that what he'd heard was from God. And then Joseph needed to do exactly what God told him without delay. As I said, that night they got up and went to Egypt. You know, they couldn't make any preparations or whatever, they just did it straight away. He went straight off. No sort of, ooh, well, not a good time, I think. 
just need to go and do something else first. No, he, he was obedient, did what he was told to do straight away. In those Bible readings, we heard about four times um, that God spoke to Egypt and um, to Joseph in a dream. Now, this is your chance to do a bit of work now. Um, around the room, the works are, I think, six sheets labelled A to F, with one of the dreams that Joseph had. Except two are fake. Two, I've made two of them up. One of them is quite subtle. One of them should be fairly obvious. Um, so, what I want you to do is, if you fancy a bit of a treasure hunt, stretch your legs, have a go around. Have a look at them all, and then when you've worked out which ones are the genuine ones, the four genuine ones, work out which order they happened, uh, that we heard them happening, and then write them on your other slip. I've, I've written down the instructions on, you find that on your tables, and then there's a sheet with a donkey on, uh, well, Mary and Joseph and a donkey, and yellow boxes. So write in the, um, yes, sorry, the, the just write in the order in which you think those dreams happened, the four that happened. Um, if you really don't feel like getting up and moving about, uh, for whatever reason, um, I'll put those four things on the screen. Um, if you really feel you need to, you can use your Bibles. Um, so, I think we'll read that. tells us that Joseph was open to God um, and he heard him clearly on four occasions. Now he might have, we don't know, I mean God may have spoken to Joseph more than four times. It only records four um, in the Bible. Uh, I mean perhaps God really did tell Joseph to go and see the pyramids because they're amazing. We will never know. As I said just now, Jesus did play a vital role in the early life of Jesus. Because and how do you do that? Because he'd been open to God, uh, and then done what God had told him to do. And this reminds us today how important it is to listen to God, and do exactly what he tells us to do, <coughs> when he tells us to do it. Advent is a time of preparation, uh, as we talked about uh, before, in which we prepare ourselves to celebrate the coming of Jesus, to celebrate his first coming, to prepare for his second coming. And one way that we should prepare ourselves is by being open to God, just like Joseph was. 
What I'd like to do now is just spend just a couple of minutes. I mean, I've been running on a bit long, a bit later than I thought we were. Um, would be spend a couple of minutes just thinking about how God's spoken to you in the past. Was it so a dream, uh, like you spoke to Joseph? Did you hear a voice? Did you see a picture? Or did just a thought pop into your head and you just recognise it as being from God? Or has he spoken to you perhaps through a book you've read, through what somebody has said or done? Um, have a think about it. Um, you may want to just have a chat on your table um, about, about that between yourselves. Um, and you may want to as well to have a look at some of the other Bible passages um, on the screen. I'm planning to move on quite quickly because we're running a bit late. So um, just have a little bit of a chat, just for a couple of minutes, about how you think that God may have spoken to you. If you want to, maybe have a look at the other Bible passages uh, when you get home. <laughs>